When are the very best times to drive for DoorDash? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer that question because I just finished a shift and I'm taking away some trends from that. And it's not as simple as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Firstly, welcome to the channel. This channel is dedicated to your success in this gig economy, the side hustle. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. And for the very best accessories for any side hustle, check out my Amazon storefront, that link down below. So DoorDash, the very best times to drive. Well, we need to understand a few things. So let's look into this shift. This is from this past Saturday in the Mission Valley Market segment here in San Diego on a $4 peak pay bonus. Order number one, Lotus tie. And I want you to notice some things in this shift specifically. I saw some real standouts in this specific shift. So $12, 2.2 miles. So what stands out the most for you on this first order? Well, I'm hoping it's the massive dollars to mile payout, right? How many dollars you're getting paid for the miles driven? It's what, like $6 per mile almost. Order number two from Karina's Ceviches and more, $12. Again, very solid for kind of an astounding 1.9 miles. Okay, another very good one here. And one thing I want to note here is this is on the edge of the Mission Valley market segment, if not actually going into another market segment. And a quick note about that. Typically, DoorDash does want to keep you in your scheduled zone or the zone that you're using the Dash Now feature in. Now, if there's peak pay in that zone, and let's say you get pulled out of the zone, and during that shift, DoorDash actually gives you an order outside of that zone, which is more rare. You will get the peak pay from your original zone. Now, from what I've seen, actually let me know down below in the comments if you've seen this as well, that if the outside marketplace actually has a higher peak pay than your scheduled zone, now, unfortunately, you won't get that. You will get the peak pay, if any, in the scheduled zone. Order number three, this one from Lucha Libre Gourmet Tacos. And yes, it's decorated exactly as you think. This one at $10 for, again, kind of a record breaking 1.5 miles. And it pays off to be by those popular restaurants. And this is one of those stacked order, $10 for an additional 2.8 miles. And this was a short shift. That's actually all the orders I got for this shift. So let's talk about when it's the most ideal time to drive. Now, I guess kind of we can think about a level one analysis being yes, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Generally, that's when, of course, you're gonna get the most orders. But let's go deeper than that. There's a certain days and even certain times within that that may get you more pay, more orders. So number one, I can't do all the research for you. Some of this is market dependent. So look at your marketplaces, look at the different segments in your marketplace, of course, and see which areas during which times of day perform best. Okay, that's great and all. I think a lot of us know we have to do our own market research, right? Well, number two, I am finding that, I mean, again, it kind of stands a reason that weekends, specifically dinner shifts on the weekends, pay more. So I know your marketplace may not offer peak pay. Actually, let me know down below in the comments if you get peak pay. And when you do get peak pay, it's more rare. Now, from what I've seen, close to 1,400 deliveries. I mean, think about it. If people are out and about as much as they can be now on the weekends, or the weekends are generally seen as that free time, right? That's a time when some customers may opt in for delivery. Okay, cool, yes. Number one, breakfast, lunch, dinner generally. Number two, knowing my market trends. Number three, looking at the dinner times during the weekends. Great, what else? Well, there's actually even deeper trends that I'm seeing here, so pay attention to this. What I am also seeing, apart from all of those other trends just mentioned, is look for any pockets and or different areas of your marketplace that people don't want to drive. For instance, I'm in the Mission Valley market segment. It's pretty central here in San Diego. So from what I've seen is there's higher peak pay in, again, those times and possibly in those areas that don't have enough drivers for whatever reason. 
I see that a lot south here in San Diego, south of San Diego in the Chula Vista marketplace. That market segment typically has longer peak pay and really peak pay when no other segment even has peak pay. And as far as time, that marketplace may have peak pay at those hours that other people don't want to drive. I see it from 12 a.m. until 4 a.m. Now, listen to this. Now, you may be thinking there's no way I can drive from midnight to 4 a.m., and that's fine. But what I want you to pay attention to is certain pockets. Again, number one, if drivers don't want to drive there, and number two, drivers can't drive. So the takeaway here is that there may be some opportunities during those times, during those market segments, where they're understaffed with the drivers. I'll give you an example. When I first started in the gig economy in October of 2015, driving for Uber, I had the nine to five job. I was working like, I think about half of drivers are working a full-time job, right? Well, I saw opportunity on the Uber and later the Lyft platforms at certain times when drivers, again, they didn't want to drive or they just couldn't drive. And a lot of that was late evenings. It was 9 p.m. until 4 a.m., really on the weekends, you know, obviously with work during the weekdays. But I would get on the hustle and I would drive those hours. Most weekends, actually in Pittsburgh, I would drive about 9 p.m., 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. And I did that because there was earnings opportunities. There was great pay. There was bonus pay called surge, well, pricing surge pay on the Uber platform, and I took advantage of that. So let's bring this back to DoorDash. Now, I'm not saying if you have a work schedule, if you have a family, if you just don't have the flexibility to drive those hours, don't necessarily change your schedule just to make, what, $2 peak pay, let's say. But if you have some flexibility, which is a lot of this gig economy, or if you are free and you're willing to drive some of these times or areas, there is some opportunities there to make more money than other drivers. And some of it may come with sacrifice. Again, let's go back to Pittsburgh. Yes, I was driving in my, what, late 20s instead of going out, right? I was making a sacrifice to invest in myself to make some extra money in the gig economy. So think about that. There's going to be pros and cons. There's trade-offs, yes. But if you're trying to make some extra money, especially now, to help yourself, to help your family, what have you, well, look at the extra things that you can do. Look at the possible sacrifices that you can make, at least for what, a day or so, or maybe a weekend or so, to make more money. I took advantage of the peak pay. I took advantage of a generally busy area of my marketplace. But let's look at the numbers for this shift to really make sense of how much it actually paid off. So again, this shift is 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. with the gross revenue of $44. And for just an hour and a half, that equals a gross revenue per hour. Very happy with it, $29.33. Driving during busy times kept me busy. I did four deliveries, received four tips, with an average of $4.25. And something I wanna point out here, business miles, very low, 13.1 business miles. And this comes back really to one of the first points is studying the different segments in your marketplace. Because in my opinion, some, areas in your marketplace will yield less business miles because of shorter orders. And because of that, a small tax deduction, $7.53. Now, if you did get value in this video, definitely drop me a like and do make sure you're stocked up with the very best accessories. Do check out that Amazon storefront, that linked down below. And you can also click or tap the screen now for my most recent video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.